Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6 with another silly car build and today I am taking a slightly different route with these. The first two vehicles that I tried had an awful lot of power, the Jaguar and the Skyline. However, around the Road America circuit, none of them could even get vaguely near the Caparo T1. They just didn't quite have the handling. So, I am hoping that this uh, Lotus Elise will have uh, more grip. It should be better through the corners. Uh, we should still get some decent power from this car mine. That is the, uh, the hope. We should have plenty of power while still being very light and hopefully uh, decent handling for the, the demands of the Road America circuit. Now, as far as engine goes, we have, well, three alternate options aside from the standard engine. I mean, the standard engine is a good engine, but it's not gonna get the same power as we can get from these other things. We can use the Turbo Rally engine, which can be quite a good engine for certain situations, although for one of these builds, it's not gonna get enough power from it. Uh, we have the choice of the V6 or the V8 Racing. Now, the V6, I think, may get slightly more power, when I finish modifying it, uh, however it is heavier, also the V6 goes in an awful lot of cars, whereas the V8 Racing doesn't go in that many, and um, it's lighter, it's about 200 pounds lighter than the V6, uh, it's lighter than the standard engine as well, and I reckon this is probably going to be a good shout for the uh, for the Lotus, there's still plenty of power available from this, this is the Aerial Atom V8 engine, I believe, so we will be going for that one, and hopefully it should, uh, yeah, well it is going to give us, it give us a lot of power for 600 122 horsepower when we put the twin turbos on it. Yes, I will have them. Uh, the rest of the build, well, we're going to be uh, getting as much handling uh, parts as we can. Aero, of course, going on the Lotus. The splitter looks quite massive on the front of this car, I will be honest. Um, the rear wing, not particularly ridiculous on the uh, on the Elise. Always hope for silly wings on the cars. Now, as far as tyres go, we... Wait, hold on. Why does that not change? Does the car come on? I'm confused as to what tyres this car... So effectively it's on the street tyres, but we can put street... I don't know. Um, I was going to say, we're not allowed to use the race tyres. The point of this series is to try and build a road car to go faster than the Caparo, since the Caparo said it's time on... Uh, sport tyres, or the equivalent of sports tyres, essentially road legal tyres. That's what all of these cars are going to be running on. Uh, so, yeah, that's what the Lotus has to deal with. Tyre sizes are never likely to be the largest on here. However, it is much smaller and lighter than the cars that have gone. Oh, certainly smaller and lighter than the Jaguar and the, uh, the Nissan. So I'm hoping... 255s on the rear. Uh, okay, I'm hoping we will have enough grip to be able to put the power down because there is going to be a fairly sizable amount of power in this car fingers crossed we will at least going through all of these parts as well the weight i think we're going to be under the 1400 pound mark which is good we're going to be lighter than the caparo when we're done in fact we're lighter than the caparo at the moment and have more power and more torque already and haven't finished building it that's quite <laughs> that's quite an impressive feat really from the loaded but we are still quite a way down on pi which hmm uh, it, it concerns me slightly because that tends to suggest to me that we might not have the handling. If uh, I mean, you know, if, we, if we've got the power and the torque and the lack of weight, if the PI is still quite a long way down, it suggests that the handling is the uh, the dodgy thing with this car. I'm also surprised to see that we can do a weight reduction on this car. I mean, it's only 104 pounds, but we've got it <laughs> got the car even lighter. I am surprised, seeing as I thought this was a pretty much a race prepared Lotus to begin with so yeah wasn't expecting to be able to do weight reduction on it but either way we're we're down to a re really rather ridiculously light weight in this car and now we're sticking in more power because you know that's always a good idea uh, i am really worried about this car being horrendously twitchy i really really hope uh, that's adding 2 pi well, how much horsepower was that 17 horsepower added 2 pi I suspect we might not really quite have the handling to uh, deal with this power i really hope i mean i thought that I have thought about that about cars before, you know, that they might be twitchy messes, um, <laughs> but and they've turned out to be great. I fear the Lotus might be. It can be a problem with track cars. However, there is uh, only one way to uh, to find that out. 
and that is of course to take the Lotus around the Road America West alternate circuit where it will get five laps to go as quickly as possible. Our current leader, the Caparo T1, has a time of 116.8 that we are going to try and get closer to. I don't think the Lotus is perhaps going to beat the Caparo as the PI difference is still fairly sizable between the two cars. I mean, you never know, maybe the Lotus will be amazing to drive. Uh, I'm hoping though that we will get a lot closer with this car, certainly a lot closer than we have with the Jaguar and the Nissan. I love how the rev counter doesn't move. <laughs> okay, there are so many revs in this. How do we how do we deal under brakes? Oh, we do not have the brakes I thought we would. I, we really do not have the brakes I thought we would. Coming down there. What? what the, um, I'm small bit confused by the Lotus. This is like I don't don't quite get that. Um, <laughs> okay, that's peculiar. I don't think I was going at. 220. I don't think I'll go ridiculous speeds down there, so why would I break it? I don't know, who knows? The brakes are not as good as I was expecting from the uh, Lotus. We do have some issues with putting the power down. We do have some issues with some slight oversteer. Some some slight oversteer from the, from the little Elise. Go on, car. Oh, no. That's not what you want the car to be doing. Why? Stay planted. I was going to look at the back of the car. I thought we just going to... Yeah, just stay on the road, please, car. Please stop moving around. Okay, now how do we fare through this next corner? This is a big test for cars. We've had understeer from the Jaguar. We've had understeer from the Nissan. We have horrible, horrible oversteer <laughs> from the Lotus. We still can't carry any speed through here whatsoever. But once we get out of this turn here, now we are really very, very fast. And then instantly on the brakes again. Because, <laughs> because there is a corner coming up. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredibly quick accelerating, as you would expect from such a light car with so much power. Uh, not that I can use said power down here because it's wiggling and bouncing around all over the place. Oh, uh, get, let's get a lot of control. We're at 192. Okay, yeah, we aren't that far off the uh, the other cars down there. <laughs> that is quick. 192 miles an hour. We have much less power than the Jaguar and the Skyline, but because we have so much less weight as well that it can uh, get up to ridiculous speeds. But it's not that much better under brakes, and that's a slight problem for the Lotus. It's really not that much better. At, uh, at getting slowed down. We hit a curb and now we're going to have an off, aren't we? Oh, come on now. Let's get it all back under control again. I think I'm going to break too late through there. I'm surprised at how, how poor this car does under, under braking. It's, oh, and that is horrible through there. The back end just has no grip in the Lotus. It's not horrendously twitchy, which is a good thing. Uh, it really isn't horrendously twitchy at all. Uh, it, is oversteery though. You know, it's not quite the, the whole, you know, you start sliding, you try to save it and then it flings you in a wall, but uh, the back end does like coming around and losing you time through the corners and that is not ideal when you've got this much power and you're trying to use this much power. All right, let's get back on the brakes. Into turn one we go. Uh, a 120, we are a long way off time-wise. I will be honest, that was not a massively clean lap from the Elise, but, um, oh no, the bumps, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a nice car to drive in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it turns out putting nearly 800 horsepower in a little Lotus is not doesn't really work. It doesn't really work at all. Oh, please stop, car. There we go. The brakes aren't that much better. The back end pretty much does its own thing. Uh, I just can't. I can't carry quarter speed with this car because the back end just doesn't allow you to do that. It's, it's doing its own thing over there. Uh, one thing that is nice is I can actually see this corner that's coming up. It's nice to be able to see where you're aiming to, uh, to get through the turns there, even if we do go a little bit on two wheels. Uh, we don't have that good a retraction in this car. We have considerably less power than we had in the likes of the Jag, but the Jag you get to full throttle a lot easier than you can with this car. Thanks to its humongous rear tyres, this just doesn't have that, uh, that traction. So you've got to wait longer to get on the power. Yeah, when you, when you do get on the power, the acceleration is phenomenal in the Lotus, as you would expect. Uh, but it does take some time getting to that, uh, getting to access all of that, uh, that power. And now we sit and we wait, and then we oversteer, and then we fight the car some more as we try to get out of this final turn. Get on, Lotus. We can do this. We can get it sorted. Just about. Okay. <clears throat> 
Sorry, my voice is slightly dying through uh, through all of this. We have not had a good lap, so we've got to be really careful of the bumps. This is not a problem. I've not seen this area be an issue with any other car. I can't be flat out coming out of that first chicane in the Lotus because of the bumps. We have to actually take it quite cautiously down there. The front of the car's lifted up. Why is the front of the car lifted up? Over there. <laughs> I had to jump on the brakes. I had no choice. We were doing a wheelie in the Lotus, and I don't know quite why we were doing a wheelie. There we go. No. Oh, God. This is not a nice car to drive. And uh, we're going to go around because I've got a wheel on the grass. This is really not a nice car to drive. It, it's terrible. The brakes aren't much better than the Jaguar. You can't take any corner speed really with the car because the back end wants to step out on you. Across the bumps it wants to wheelie, which is not a problem. I, I mean, we've had... Was it the Alpha 33 it takes a lot of tuning to get quick? It can be a ridiculously quick car. When you put a lot of power in it, though, it does tend to do wheelies and so on. Uh, we're selling it on Forza 5. I've not really driven it on Forza 6. Um, but that is not a problem that I expected from a track-ready Lotus. I know the Alpha was a race car, but the suspension on that thing was very, very soft. So that's what caused it to do silly stuff. This is a, a sensible, modern track car. Why are we having so many handling issues with this vehicle? I don't know. <laughs> Well, I have one more lap to try and get a, a clean run out of this car. Um, I'm... Yeah, I thought this might stand a chance. I, this series makes no bloody sense to me, okay? <laughs> I try and build a sensible car, a car that I think might be uh, good for this kind of thing, you know? We've got, as I said, we have got more power, more torque, less weight than the Caparo. And it's awful. It's absolutely awful awful. I've got to be so careful around here to make sure I don't suddenly get the car doing a wheelie. Uh, we can get it slowed down now through this uh, through this turn. Okay, we're going to go for... Oh no, stop with the wheel spin. Bloody hell. Uh, we're going to try and go for a decent lap at least in this car. Alright, get it slowed down through here. I mean, for the very brief moments when you have it under control, it's not that bad. But it's such brief moments where you actually have any control over what the Lotus is doing. I can't put the power down particularly well coming out here. I should try and short shifting through there. Oh crap, we're going to end up out wide over there because the brakes are not very Lotus-like. Uh, <laughs> I'm really, really quite disappointed with this car. I daren't take any speed through here. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that was really careful through there, just making sure I didn't have a crash. And still the back end wanted to get away the second I tried to get on the power. Come on, Lotus. Let's get out of that turn there. And how are we doing lap time wise? I don't look. Oh, for God's sake. This car is awful. It is just completely and utterly rubbish uh, around here. We're going to set a lap time, even with the back end letting go. Uh, 25 0. You do not deserve any better than that, Lotus. It is shockingly bad to drive. <laughs> the brakes are no better than the Jaguars. It can't put any of its power down. Uh, it's a disappointment. From, from the Lotus uh, it goes well it goes into fourth it is what is it three seconds down on the Jag and the Skyline I think this actually puts into context just how good the Jaguar and the Skyline actually were uh, around around this track you know yeah they both had understeer issues at the final corner uh, they had what I thought were braking issues down the end of that straight but the Lotus you know this is what a thousand pounds lighter than the Jaguar it's going maybe uh, I don't know, maybe 10 miles an hour slower than than them, and you can break fractionally later, but it's not by very much. I'm really surprised by this car. I really thought the Elise would be a lot better around here, but it, it simply isn't. I mean, okay, on that final lap, if I hadn't got a big sideways moment into that final corner, maybe I could have found half a second, but uh, honestly, it doesn't bloody deserve it. It's shockingly bad uh, around this track. Hmm, that is a little bit of a disappointment. Well, the uh, Lotus can perhaps redeem itself a little bit as we go to uh, take it for a speed run. So, we are here at uh, Le Mans to tackle the uh, the wet weather and see how fast the, this, uh, this Lotus will go. I'm not quite expecting the uh, the 250 miles an hour from this car. That's not bad. 221 is not bad at all. Can we get any more out of it? Yeah, if we get 220 in the Lotus, that's, that's pretty damn good going. I mean, let's face it, we haven't simply got the power that the other cars or the other cars have, have had we're what was it about 300 horsepower down almost on the skyline uh so wait hold on i just fiddled with that and now we've got less speed hold on a second two okay, go back uh 
So we started off at 221, and now we've gone backwards. There we go. That'll do. We will put that there. Uh, I will keep the downforce on the vehicle because... Uh, oh, I may have forgotten. The load just doesn't have a roof. Or, well, windows, for that matter. It's a little bit soggy in here. <laughs> may have slightly forgotten about that one. Um, yeah, the reason why I'm keeping the downforce on the car, we'll see if it is aero-limited or if we just run out of power. Uh, we have, there have been issues with light cars and wet weather. I found this out to my peril with an Alpha TZ2. Phenomenally fast, what was it, B class or C class? I can't remember now uh, which class it was. It was phenomenally fast at the dry tracks. I took it to the wet brands hatch and it was awful, like absolutely undrivable. Admittedly, the windscreen wipers in that car are useless and they barely clear the bit in front of you, but it was a horrible, horrible car to, to drive. It really did not deal with the rain very well. So there are certain fears that this very light Lotus uh, could have some problems, although it looks as if it's not actually that bad. Oh crap, we're going to hit the bumps out there. That's fine. We got away with it. Uh, this is probably going to do a bloody wheelie, to be honest. Uh, yeah, the Lotus has got those first few corners without any issues, and now we go into warp speed as we fire it down the back straight. It's, uh, it gets up to 200 miles an hour really, really rather fast. That is impressive speed that the car gets to down there. I suspect we are going to run out of power once we get past that 200 mile an hour mark. That's this is damn impressive though for, for what it is. Oh crap! Found a puddle! Found a puddle over there. Come on. Catch it. Catch it. We got 214 out of the Lotus. <laughs> I got it under control without hitting a wall. I mean, I'll take that as a victory. <laughs> okay. That is the dangers of doing this in the wet. <laughs> Okay, I've learnt where that puddle is. Bloody hell. I thought I was being sent careful and driving down the middle of the road. That's what I did with the Skylar. I mean, I love the fact that we're now back up to 200 miles an hour again. We're pretty much back up to the same speed that we had a crash at already. Uh, and that's quite impressive. I bet we're not going to like this turn. We don't like this turn whatsoever. Whee! Okay, that's, that, one, that one I'm not going to keep out of the wall. Get it back together again. There we go. Uh, <laughs> this car is stupid. Um... Yeah, I mean, the, 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 if I hit a puddle at 215, we're going to have an accident, quite frankly. Uh, it does sort of run out a little bit of acceleration once you get it up to to that kind of speed. But we're not going to take that, that corner flat. We don't have the, the rear end grip in this car. It, it, it just wants to do its own thing, and that's not really conducive for getting decent uh, <laughs> decent quartering out of this car. Uh, the straight line speed, I'm quite impressed by the Lotus, uh, in all honesty, getting up to that sort of speed. I, I wasn't quite expecting 250. It's the way it gets to 200 miles an hour is really impressive in this car. It gets to it so quickly. But we do not have the grip, we do not have the handling in uh, in this car to to deal with the demands of Road America, to deal with that corner. Uh, at the end. I mean, it's not even a massive corner. It's just, it's just enough to, to cause this car a lot of issues. I think the, the most important thing that we can learn from all of this is that uh, the Skyline and the Jaguar are actually pretty damn impressive vehicles with their speed and their control. When this Lotus, yeah, it may have more power and be lighter, have more torque than the Caparo, but it is a long, long way off the uh, the time set by the T1. I mean, we're talking nine seconds slower than, than the, uh, the T1. Yeah, this series doesn't really make a huge amount of sense to me. I thought we'd have a good car in this one. I thought this one would stand a chance, and it's even further off than the other vehicles. So, yeah, there we go. That is it uh, for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.